Hey guys, this is Mr. Post, and on today's video we'll be checking out solubility curves. It's a way for us to express how temperature affects solubility, but to actually put it on a graph. So we're going to be keying again on temperature today, and its effects on how things dissolve, and we'll be expressing our information on a curve, which is kind of a graph. Let's get into it. Before we get into this whole entire topic, we do want to go over a couple key terms. The first key term we want to get into is saturation. What, is some, what, do you say, what does it mean when something is saturated? And this simply describes a solution that has the maximum amount of solute dissolved. The maximum amount of solute that has been dissolved. A good analogy for this would be like a, a paper towel that is soaking wet. The paper towel can no longer absorb any more water, therefore it's saturated with water. Uh, another way you can think of it as if you're making like an iced tea mix, and you're adding like iced tea to a glass of water, the point at which it no longer, well, no longer dissolves and actually starts to accumulate on the bottom of the glass, that is the point at which the solution is saturated. Now reverse, the, on, on the other side, you're going to see a solution that is unsaturated. That's the point at which you can actually continue to dissolve more of that substance. You have not reached the maximum dissolving point yet. If when you're making that iced tea, a good way to look at it would be to say, I can continue to dissolve more sugar into my iced tea mix. You know what? Your solution is not saturated yet. You are unsaturated. Another example, let's use a paper towel analogy. If you have a paper towel that's dry, it is totally unsaturated, meaning you have a lot less than the maximum amount of water that that paper towel can you know, absorb. Even a paper towel that is damp or even sort of wet, it is not 100% saturated and if it can still absorb some more water. A term you're probably unfamiliar with, though, is supersaturated. And that's not a term we're going to go crazy on. We're going to hold back. We're not going to go nuts on this one, but we're going to simply describe a solution that has more than a saturated solution has. You're, dis you're dissolving more solute than you really should at that given temperature. Okay, And that is known as a supersaturated solution. This is a solubility curve. It has three regions, and it has those terms we've just defined. The key thing you're going to see on this line is this graph, okay? This, um, rather, this line that goes right down this graph. This is the curve, all right? So we're looking for a solubility curve. This is a curved line, and that's my solubility curve. The line represents the point of a temperature and solute that is a saturated solution. So any point on this line are the conditions for a solution to be saturated. Now let's check out the axes here. On the x-axis, you have temperature. So we're dealing with temperature today and heat. Over here, solute is how much of a substance dissolves. So once again, this curve is nothing more than points. Let's say at this given temperature, how much solute can I dissolve? And you go over to this line over here. At this given temperature right here, let me go up to this line right here. Okay, at this point, I can dissolve this much in that solution. Okay, it'll become a little bit more clear as we go on through this uh, lesson here. The whole zone underneath this graph, underneath this line here, is an unsaturated solution. So if I said, what is this point right here? Well, at that given temperature and at that given amount of solute dissolved, that would be an unsaturated solution. The whole zone above our curve, let's just say I pick this point right here. Well, that temperature going down there... I can dissolve that much. If my solution had those conditions, it would be a supersaturated condition. And likewise, if I have any point on this line here, they would be considered saturated solutions. It should all make sense as we go through the lesson, though. Here's a good example. I found this picture on the internet. I thought it was a pretty cool picture. It shows sugar in cold and hot water. And I just want you to see, in cold water, there is this much sugar left over at the bottom of a graduated cylinder. It's mixed with water. And the same amount of water, you can see 35 milliliters of water. If the water is hot, I have roughly 5 milliliters of sugar left. So what is it saying is that, well, I have a 10 milliliter pileup of sugar over here, and I have a 5 milliliter pileup of sugar. The point is, when the solvent is hot, sugar can dissolve a lot more. Okay. So hot would be considered, what, 100 degrees, 80 degrees? And the point is this. If you track this 80-degree line up, at what point does it become saturated? The solution is saturated for 80 degrees when I hit this line. How much of my sugar can I dissolve in there? Let's go over this way and find out. I can dissolve roughly 
what are we going to call that? 360, this is grams of solute. So if I had 80 degree water, I can roughly dissolve 360 grams of sugar in 100 milliliters of water. All right, that's pretty cool. How about this? What if I have 20 degree water? How much sugar can I dissolve? Well, colder water holds less solute. Let me go over and find out how much. That's going to be roughly 200 grams. So check out the conditions here. 20 degrees can dissolve 200 grams, and 80 degree water can dissolve roughly 360. Just driving home the point that we're making here is that the warmer the solvent, the more, in this case, sugar I can dissolve. But that is not true for every single compound. A great example is going to be salt. I drew lines up here at 15 milliliters, and I want you to see that roughly cold or hot, I have the same amount of solute, in this case, salt, that is remaining. That has not been dissolved yet. And so what that is showing is that it really doesn't matter if it is hot or if it is cold. Salt will only dissolve a little bit more in hot water than really cold water. And therefore, bear in mind, this is called a solubility curve. The curve is right here. The curve for salt is very, very flat. It doesn't change as drastically as sugar. So I just want to drive this point home is that all substances will have different solubility curves. Most of them increase with hot, you know, hot solvent, in this case hot water, but some of them also will go opposite. Some of them will increase in cold water. And we'll show you an example of that. All right, guys, let's check out this uh, and make a little application question on our solubility curve. Okay, the question is what temperature would a solution need to be to dissolve 110 kilograms of solute. Now I got the 110 kilograms of solute just from this curve over here. Uh, the axis it says solubility kilograms per 100 kilograms of water. So if I want to dissolve 110 kilograms of solute, I just go up here where 110 is. That's 100. There's 120. Uh, 110 is probably right there. I'm just going to follow this over until it hits the saturation line. This is the point at which the solution is saturated. And now I'm going to go downwards and find out what temperature I would need. And I would need, as you can see, a 60 degree solvent. So what temperature would a solution need to dissolve, be to dissolve 110 kilograms of solute? I would need 60 degree solution. So that's kind of what we can use the solubility curve for, is one way to find out how warm a, a solvent needs to be in order to dissolve a given amount of solute. How about the next question? If a solution had a 100 kilograms of solute, all right, so I'm going to mark that point off. I have 100 kilograms of solute. And this one tells me that I have 80 degrees Celsius solvent. Is my 80 degree mark. The question is, is that solution under those conditions of 180, is that saturated? We'll find out. Saturated has to fall directly on that line. So we're going to check this out. I'm going to draw a line going upward straight upwards, and I'm also going to draw a line going over this way for the 100. And wherever they cross, that is the condition of my solvent. My solvent is 80 degrees in temperature, and the amount of solute I have in there is 100 grams weighed out on a scale. And any point that is below this curve represents an unsaturated solution. So the question is, is it a saturated solution? No, it's not saturated, it's actually. I still have more to go. I can still technically dissolve that much more, which would roughly be, I can still dissolve roughly, oh, let's call that 25 grams more, or 25 kilograms more um, solute in that solution. This is an example of a very common solubility curve, you know, that you would see in a textbook, where they're going to reference many, you know, different compounds in order to express information about the solubility. As you can see, there is not even two compounds that are roughly have close or similar solubility curves. And they're all very different. You have one at the very top here, you have to realize there's potassium iodide up here. You know, we have uh, ammonium right down here. We have C2SO4 going over this way. There's NaCl. Remember NaCl from the previous slide, a very uh, broad and flat curve? Well, there you see it right there, still very broad and flat. The question is, which solute 
which one of these compounds is most soluble at 10 degrees Celsius. So you go down to the temperature and you look. There's 10 degrees. You just follow that line straight up until you hit the highest compound. The compound that is most soluble right here is going to be potassium iodide because at 10 degrees Celsius I can dissolve roughly I'd say a hundred let's call it 136 grams of it in 100 grams of water. So that would be the most soluble. I could also ask what is the least soluble substance at 10 degrees Celsius? And you would find the lowest you know chart here. There's a curve right here that belongs to potassium chlorate, KClO3. I do want to bring your attention actually to two compounds that I kind of say go in the opposite direction. NH3, the curve goes down in this direction, meaning at zero degrees Celsius, it is more soluble than it is at 100 degrees Celsius. And the same thing with uh, cesium sulfate right here. It is more soluble at zero degrees Celsius than it is at 100 degrees Celsius. So not every single compound increases in solubility as the temperature increases, although a lot of them do, and most of them probably do. Some of them do not. Check out this question, guys. How much NaCl can be dissolved in 90 degrees solvent? So let's find the NaCl line. This line right here is NaCl. And you take 90 degrees, and you go up, and say the most I can possibly dissolve is that point right there. I'm going to follow that over this way. And actually, it lines up perfectly with 40 grams. So at most, if I have 100 grams of water, 100 gram glass of water, it's 100 milliliters of water, um, what's the most amount of salt I can dissolve? Is 40 grams. All right, guys, this is what the solubility curve looks like for gases. Gases are different than, um, than solids in the fact that they're actually very, very soluble in cold water. Okay, The colder the, the solvent, the more soluble they are. You'll notice every single one of these has a higher solubility when the temperature, going down to temperature, when the temperature is low. And as the temperature increases, say to 45 or 46, you'll notice that the temperature affects the solubility. And I have a decrease in solubility as the temperature increases. This is actually very, very big implications, right? Very big implications, especially for this guy right here, oxygen. Okay, during the summertime, you know, any aquatic, uh, aquatic, <laughs> any aquatic life that actually uses oxygen and needs it in the summertime, they're going to have a hard time finding that oxygen because the oxygen level decreases significantly because in the summertime, you have a hotter like body of water. Think of a pond or a lake. When that pond or lake heats up, really what's happening is that the level of oxygen is dropping. So if you're a fish and you're swimming around that lake, you're going to say, oh my gosh, this water's hot. I've got to go find some cold water because in the colder water, there's more oxygen for them. So fish in the summertime tend to swim down deeper, not just because it's cold and it feels nice, but really they swim down deep because they can breathe better down there. There's more oxygen dissolved in cold water than warm water. So once again, guys, the whole gist of today was to look at solubility curves and really just to get a, get a hold of how does temperature affect solubility. And not only does it affect solubility, how can I express it in a graph? All right. Once again, this is a very, very useful tool for scientists to compare and predict different amounts. Um, it's just a great way for scientists to express information about the solubility of a substance. I do want to ca uh, catch two things here. Is that one, you have positive slopes and negative slopes. Just bear in mind, yes, most substances increase in solubility with increased temperature, but there are certain substances, such as all gases, that do the opposite. As the temperature increases, their solubility decreases. All right, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope it was helpful. Catch you next time.